Hi there, dear listener. Lazlo here with a quick pre-roll message for you. Before we get started, I want to let you know there are all kinds of convenient ways for you to support my efforts to bring you all these podcast shows on Chinese history, Chinese sayings, and tea history. If you go to my website at teacup.media and click the support button at the top, you'll find a bunch of ways to show some appreciation. There's Patreon, where you can get early access to new episodes, exclusive content, and an invite to the Teacup Media Discord channel, and more. CHP Premium, it also has early access, exclusive episodes, and ad-free versions of the entire CHP back catalog. Plus, there's several other ways to donate to the show as well. Check the episode show notes for a link to that very page. And my deepest thanks for listening and supporting me and my humble efforts. Hello again, everybody. Laszlo Montgomery here. Another episode, another Yu. This one describes a situation most of us working stiffs might have come across at least once in the arc of their career. This Yu, this Chinese saying, is used to describe people who act big and strike fear in others by living in the shadow of someone powerful. This is the story of the fox and the tiger. And for this one, we have to once again, as we so often do, Wind the clock back to the Warring States period, the latter half of the Eastern Zhou Dynasty. So many of these Chinese sayings seem to come from that era. The source for this Chengyu is the Chan Guo Ce, the Strategies of the Warring States, one of the few primary sources of those times. Today we're looking at one of the several Warring States, the Kingdom of Chu, Mighty Chu. No one ever thought this kingdom could ever be taken down. But indeed, they one day got beat. Our story takes place during the time of King Xuan of Chu, Chu Xuan Wang, 369 to 340 BCE. This is comparable to Alexander the Great in the West. The young Alexander, that is. Today, we look at the old classic, Hu Jia Hu Wei. Once again, we break it down uno a uno. First character, Hu, second tone. This means a fox. The second character is jia. In this case, means to borrow. Hu jia. A fox borrows. Moving right along, we come to another hu. But this hu, my friends, is not a fox. This hu has the third tone, hu. Therefore, this means tiger. Hu is a fox. Hu is a tiger. The fourth character is wei. Wei means power, might, strength, or prestige. So, Hu Wei means the might or the power of the tiger. Once again, string it all together and we get fox, borrow, tiger, might. Okay, I could see some of you nodding, thinking you got it. This is sort of like Wheel of Fortune. You could perhaps guess the meaning of these four clues right out of the starting gate. Well, like all Cheng Yu, there's an ancient story behind this, and today's is from more than 23 centuries ago. Chu Xuan Wang, King Xuan of Chu, was wondering one day why was it that the people to the north in Han, Wei, and Qi were so terrified and scared of his general Zhao Xixu. He kept hearing stories how people particularly feared this one general. So he asked his minister, Jiang Yi, Why was that? You had to be careful how you answered these kinds of questions, so Jiang Yi tried to be tactful. He used a fable that he was familiar with to explain to King Xuan of Chu, because it had animals in it, it's a fable rather than a parable. He began to say to King Xuan that once upon a time there was a fox that wasn't being vigilant one day, and a tiger snuck up on him and snatched him in his jaws. The fox, of course, begged for his life and said to this tiger, "Eh, it wouldn't be such a wise idea to eat him. The tiger asked, oh yeah, why is that? And the fox replied, you will defy the gods themselves who made me the chief of the forest. When the fox saw the skepticism in the tiger's eyes, he continued, you should be fearful of their wrath if you dare eat me. Release me and see for yourself how the gods have empowered me and how all creatures of this forest cower in fear and flee at the first sight of me. The tiger thought this over and decided he had better hedge his bets. So he released the fox and followed him closely through the forest to see if his wild claims were true. 
sure enough, wherever they went, every mammal, bird, and reptile who saw the fox coming at once began fleeing for their lives. It was quite a scene, the, the fox walking through the forest, head held high, tiger right behind him, putting on ears like he actually held this authority, passed to him directly by the gods. He strutted and made it look in front of the tiger like they were all running away from him. But you can guess the real reason. That tiger was giving this fox a full court press and was right on his tail. He didn't want this potential snack getting away. But he just couldn't fail to notice how every animal took one look at the fox and scattered in every direction. Little did this tiger know that all those eyeballs were on him, and the reason they were scattering was because of him. The tiger, oblivious to the situation, said to the fox, "'You are indeed something else. I can't believe how feared you are in the forest. I guess the gods indeed have made you the chosen one to rule these lands. I therefore must let you go and take my leave.' The minister, Jiang Yi, sighed and said to King Xuan, You see, General Zhao Xi Xu, who was so feared by the people of the north, he's the fox. And the king's powerful army that General Zhao Xi Xu commands acts as the tiger. The northern people who flee upon hearing General Zhao's name, they are the animals in the forest. The Chu king figured out it wasn't Zhao Xi Xu the people of the north feared. It was the size and viciousness of his great Chu army that was feared. Zhao Shi Xu was only able to act rough and tough and powerful because he commanded this terrible army with such a fearsome fighting reputation. I'm not sure what the English equivalent is, but, well, to bully people by wrapping yourself up in the authority of a powerful backer is what this Chinese saying is all about. If you're suffering from, let's say, an abusive manager... Or supervisor is really nothing but pushes you around because his brother or sister is the president of the company. That's a clear case of Hu Jia Hu Wei, some secretary or personal assistant who's always giving you a hard time because they work for some big politician or celebrity. Hu Jia Hu Wei, anyone, usually someone small minded or evil, can be said to be Hu Jia Hu Wei. If they are using someone else's power to browbeat or force others to put up with all kinds of petty bullying. It can even be used geopolitically to describe states who push other states around because they're allied with a greater power. Hu Jia Hu Wei. Yeah, that's been around since forever. The fox borrows the tiger's might. I hope this one is now indelibly attached to your neurons for future use. If any of you have one of these... Hu Jia Hu Wei types in your life. You have my deepest sympathies. Okay, that's it for this time, but rest assured, I'll be back next week for another useful and interesting Cheng Yu, a Chinese saying, for your ever-growing collection. Think about wandering over to teacup.media to go check out our other China cultural shows, the long-running and internationally award-winning China History Podcast, and the China Vintage Hour and much, much more to come. Just wait and see. And don't forget, if you're flying Cathay Pacific Airways, you can also listen to this exact same Chinese Sayings podcast as well as the China History podcast. Next to a good night's sleep, nothing helps you beat a 14-hour flight more than that. Until the next time, meine Freunde, this is Laszlo Montgomery. On behalf of Joe Wei, leading the team at the CRC, the Cheng Yu Research Center, wishing you a fond farewell and imploring you to please consider coming back next time for another episode here at the Chinese Sayings Podcast.